Happy Earth Day, my spirited friends. It is a blustery, <laughs> feels like a winter day instead of a spring day here in New York on April 22nd, but I did manage to get to my community garden, the Lotus Garden, and posted something on, on uh, Instagram and Facebook. And it just um, just helped me feel so wonderfully connected with Mama Gaia, as I like to call Mother Earth. And I hope you're doing something day, today to do that as well. Of course, we are in this space as we do every week um, in, in this, uh, my beloved spiritual, uh, spirited living community. We are honoring the Divine Feminine and it's such an obvious thing to do today. We, we personify the earth as mother and have for millennia probably. And, and, and there, while there may be male uh, gods around the world that are connected with the earth, I think our, our natural um, depiction of the divine feminine, of, of, of the earth mother is divine, of the mother is divine, is, is earth mother. And what I'm, what I'm going to do this week is to just highlight a few um, earth goddesses from very few from around the world. Um, and if literally, if you Google earth goddesses, you'll find out about a whole bunch. But since I like to try to keep these uh, no more than 10, 12 minutes or so, um, I won't go through the whole litany. But I certainly had fun playing with the ones that, that I did today. So in this space, we honor all the qualities of the divine feminine, um, one of which, and I always, I always say, this came out of my master's work on the divine feminine from 20 something years ago, that uh, it, we, it's honoring our emotions, celebrating our intuition, honoring our bodies. We are now, as of yesterday, day before, we're now in the Taurus season of the year. And, and, and then uh, through our bodies, honoring our connection to nature. So, hey Stephanie. So look at how you connect with nature all the time, but especially in this, in this Taurus season and certainly on this beautiful Earth Day. What are you doing to celebrate the Earth today? I literally got to get my hands in Earth. I planted some trillium flowers, um, celebrated my, my daffodils coming up. You can, if you would really love to know more how, how you can serve the environment and support the environment, my Unitarian Church, the Fourth Universalist Society, UU Church, uh, has a very active, wonderful environmental justice team. And uh, I think probably if you go to their website, you can access it there. But if you want to find out about very specific things you can do, um, I left a phone message on my state senator's um, uh, telephone line this week on his voicemail about um, the plastics law that is um, banning plastic straws, which sounds like a little thing, but kind of amazing how many plastic straws end up um, strewn all over the place that are not necessary. So that kind of thing. So in turn, that's the practical side of things. And let's look at some of the goddesses that I, that I wanted to play with this time. Um, Gaia, of course, is the obvious one. She was the, the primordial Greek goddess. She, she gave birth to all the gods and goddesses through her connection with Uranus, with, with uh, Uranus. <laughs> um, Uranus uh, was, the, was the Greek name. And, and then she, she was pretty feisty. She fought him, she fought her son when, when some of her children were being um, sublimated. Um, she fought to get them freed and, and connected with um, several other important male deities in order to continue giving birth to uh, humanity. And probably, I mean, there are, frankly, kind of some boring um, images of, of Gaia in, in the, the Greek mode, but maybe one of the most well-known ones is, is this beautiful, and I got to find her so she, you can see her both on Instagram and Facebook. This beautiful, um, she's called the Millennial Goddess, and she was created by um, Oberon Zell. And I talked about her last um, Thanksgiving when I was looking at um, Gaia and gratitude right before Thanksgiving. 
and she's quite extraordinary. I'm actually, she's on her way to me. I actually ordered one of these because I've just always loved her. And, and if you look really closely, you can see sketches of plants and um, all kinds of things carved into her arms and legs. And of course, her belly is, is the earth. She's holding the earth. Another wonderful one, if you, if you have never seen Moana, the Disney movie Moana, make sure that you do. It's, they're really, so, so this, is, this is their version of, um, of the earth goddess. Um, Tefiti, they call her. She is not a real goddess, but I just think her image is so wonderful. Um, and it was just, I loved, one of the many things I loved about that movie. So those are, those are some um, probably better known uh, earth goddesses that, that you may have heard of. What I chose to do was to, was to highlight um, an Aztec earth goddess uh, from Mexico, Coatlicue. Coatlicue, and there's a statue, there are many statues of her. She is actually the creator and destroyer of Earth. And like Gaia, she gave birth to all kinds of um, gods and mortals, and she was considered um, the goddess and, and gave birth to the moon and the stars and many gods and goddesses. And she, she was known as the goddess of fire and fertility and death and rebirth and she, if, if you look, I don't know that you can see it so clearly on her. Um, oh, sorry. I, mm, yes, uh, you may not be able to see very clearly on her, but she, her, um, she's covered. She has snakes in different parts of herself. Um, snakes being a, a classic uh, symbol of fertility, of death and rebirth. Um, she, her, her. Her breasts are always depicted as somewhat saggy and flabby because she has been nurturing all of her children, both the mortal, her mortal children and her uh, and all the gods and goddesses that she gave birth to. And she, her necklace shows um, is made of human hearts and hands and feet and skulls because she she represents the place from which we all come and to whom we shall return. That's her. Um, you know, that's the, the death and rebirth image of her and the idea that, that um, she's, <laughs> and, and, and actually the next one I'm gonna show you um, will also does the same thing. She was, she, she, she reminds me of Kali, which uh, is the fierce mother. Um, and the fact that she's got all these human body parts on her kind of makes you wonder, but she protected those um, just as, as Gaia did. There's this protectress, creatrix uh, energy to any of these earth goddesses. The last one, and I knew, I knew something of Coatlicue, um, Coatlicue, <laughs> um, and the other one that I didn't know so much about is, let's see, Asasiya, and she is an African goddess from West Africa. Um, particularly apparently in Ghana and in um, the Ivory Coast. And in Ghana, she's with the Ashanti, um, Ashanti tribe, or the, the um, make sure I have, my, and again, I, I, I researched the pronunciation, but I never know, the Akan people, of, of Akan people of West Africa. And she also, the goddess of death and rebirth, of, of uh, mortality, of fertility. She has wonderful um, associations with her because she's also the goddess of truth and our values. And it was said that if you wanted to, to demonstrate your credibility, that you were honest, that you were telling the truth, that you would put your lips to the soil, you would kiss the soil in, in honor of her. And another tradition, which I love, Thursday, right today, which is her sacred day, the farmers agreed not to till the earth and, and, and just you know gave her a rest that day. At the same time, they would also sacrifice roosters to her um, to, uh, um, for, for fertility. And, and, and any tilling that they did, any growth that, that the farmers, these Akan farmers did, was to 
um, was to ask permission to to make sure that she was um, that 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 she offered her her uh, her fruits her fertility willingly. Um, Asasiya means literally old woman earth, which I loved. Let's see what other little goodies I want to tell you about her. Um, presides over motivates truth and virtue. She cares for and judges our spirits. And she is the one that we reach out to when we want to assure um, a, a fruitful harvest. So with all that interesting backstory of, of the Earth Mother in a couple different cultures, I will share with you probably one of my oldest, um, or it probably is, it is an old one, but one, one of the first chants that I uh, ever learned, which was honoring the earth. And may be familiar to those of you that have done um, women's spirit circles and that kind of thing with me. It goes, and I'll sing, um, uh, it's got two verses, and I'll sing each verse twice. And I invite you to just kind of close your eyes and listen, and then keep singing it as you, as you go out into the world and look around, appreciate the earth that you, all the manifestations of, of the Earth Mother, of Mother Earth, of Mama Gaia, that surround us all the time, and particularly today when we're celebrating Earth Day. And think about what's one small and maybe some big ways that you can nurture her back and support her the same way that she does us. Because of course, humankind would not be here if not for the, the abundance of the Earth. So the chant goes like this. The earth is our mother. We must take care of her. The earth is our mother. We must take care of her. Hey, Anna, ho, Yana, hey, yan, yan. Hey, Anna, ho, Yana, hey, yan, yan. The earth is our mother. We must take care of her. The earth is our mother. We must take care of her. Hey, Yana, ho, Yana, hey, yan, yan. Hey, Yana, ho, Yana, hey, yan, yan. Her sacred ground we walk upon. With every step we take her sacred ground we walk upon. With every step we take. Hey, Yana, ho, Yana, hey, yan, yan. Hey, Yana, ho, Yana, hey, yan, yan. Her sacred ground we walk upon. With every step we take her sacred ground we walk upon. With every step we take. Hey, Yana, ho, Yana, hey, yan, yan. Hey, Yana, ho, Yana, hey, yan, yan. Hmm. One of my favorites. <laughs> so carry that in your heart, carry that in your mind, in your soul as you walk on Mother Earth today and honor her in whatever way you can think to. And let me know if you'd like to be put in touch with our environmental justice team at the Fourth Universalist Society so that you can support her further in some very tangible ways. Thanks so much for being with me and see you back here next week when I think we'll be playing with, um, with Flora and Beltane, which is May Day. Have a wonderful week.